I reach out to you because I like um even when sometimes um um when I post certain things, how you have your own twist and your own turns and your own understanding of it. So I did I do appreciate that. So I wanted to reach out to you to ask your opinion on this. I am Sean Taylor. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Sean Taylor, S H U N. Um, and I am just a um you know, just a community partner, I like to say, and I love to have community conversation that will help advance and enrich our relationships because I feel like healthy relationships build healthy communities. So awesome. that's what's important to me. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think about and what comes off your head? Um, you know, you said that you were trying to get away from the society norm, right? The yes. men should do this, women should do this stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what do you think about when a, a man asks a woman and this is a basic question what do you bring to the table what what do you feel about that question i think that it's a valid question um i think that it's you know cliche question you know mm -hmm. that we ask but i think you know the the base or the root of the question is really can you bring value to my life you know, and what I think that, value, what type of value do you see that being like as far as in that um, idea? Like, can you be embodied? What type of value do you think that means? Oh, uh, do you see? Yeah. So I think that we should equally bring value of peace, of love, of understanding, of honesty, of transparency, of me wanting to see you be the absolute best version of yourself and me be the same thing. You know, I think that we should create spaces for people, especially men, to operate in their authenticity because men are charged with a very huge task of um, conforming, I would say, to the world's view of manhood, you know? So he's gotta have a nice car, he's gotta look nice, he's gotta dress nice, he's gotta have a six-figure career, or he feels inadequate. And I just feel like as a woman, it's my responsibility to not just a guy that I'm dating, but to let all men know that their value supersedes their ability to provide. So I think that um, my value in bringing should just, again, should be a holistic approach to anybody's life that, I, that, that I'm in, whether it be friends or family or even a neighbor. You know, we should bring value to each other's lives where we're advocating for the best versions of ourselves. I like that. I like that. Okay. I like that. Well, I appreciate you. Uh, yeah. I think I get I get exactly where you're coming from. I, I know, um, and I think this would be an, a very great addition to the other woman because you know everybody sees it differently. So right. I think that's why I wanted to to see what everybody sees, including my wife too, but mm -hmm. she don't like the mm -hmm. camera. So, she, but um, <laughs> it, but it's just to it's just a beautiful thing to see different ideas and bring it together so that somebody who may need a certain kick or a certain understanding could see from different perspectives. Yeah. And and I think ultimately everyone has to go after what they feel they need. Mm -hmm. However, I do caution people to make sure they have searched and they have the proper information when they're determining what they need. Right. Mm -hmm. And so for many, many years, my whole thing was like most women in society is like, oh, the man is supposed to be the provider, you know, for a lot of years. I mean, and then we can debunk that in so many ways because, mm -hmm. you know, the woman is supposed to be a nurturer and the man is supposed to be a provider. Okay, everyone is providing something, the man right. and the woman. Everyone right. is nurturing something, you, you know. Especially yeah. if you have kids so, and stuff. <laughs> so this whole, this whole worldview of men are providers and women are nurturers, it's bull crap, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, so I realized in my own research and my own studies is that men were not providing, you know, back in the 30s and 40s and 50s because they were just stand up guys. It was really a way that they used to control the women. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you find a guy that's providing because he loves you and he just wants you to be able to operate in your femininity and, you know, not have to stress or worry about bills and he's not controlling and domineering, then that's great. 
But most men that that learn to be providers learned it from a very patriarchal view. So it's it was ownership, mm. you know. So it, it was it was almost like I mean the slave masters provided for the slave. Yeah, you know. So that's true. Good you know, point. We as women, we have to be careful what we're asking for and make sure what we're asking for is rooted and grounded in something that's healthy. So what what um in that um scenario when you're talking about um be careful what you're asking for because sometimes the provider is a way like my friend days are used to control. So what would you say a healthy balance is when it when you're asking for a provider? What 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 is a healthy balance? Like what is what should you expect? I think it, and, and like I said, I think that we need to define providing. Like I may be better at, you know, like I'll take my parents for an example. My mom has a doctorate and a PhD, right? My dad mm -hmm. is a convicted felon, mm -hmm. right? So his ability to provide in certain instances when we're talking about just from a career standpoint is not going to be what she can do, sure. right? He'd have to go into entrepreneurship opportunity, mm -hmm. right? But if we just talked about from a career standpoint, my mom has the ability to provide six figures you know, with her, she's been a teacher for 42 years and she's got every degree known to man. So, right. you know, she can walk into a job and they're going to offer her six, six figures. My dad can't say the same thing. Right. So when we when we think about providing, she's able to provide at a more efficient level financially, but he's able to provide at a more uh, efficient level mentally and emotionally. Mm. So I think that when two people get together, we have to be more realistic about what is it that I, I don't need finances. So why am I running a guy down that makes six figures when I have already um, like designed my life to not need as much? So why am I running a guy down for finances? I ask that question sometimes. I just don't understand it either. I, I, I honestly don't understand it. If you have your own stuff, why is that so important for you? Because it's a social norm, it's a social programming that we have women, women and men, we both complain about the very thing that we subscribe to. True. Right. And so we're complaining. And I was thinking about it earlier. I was thinking, I, I you know, I meet guys and, and it's like he's a provider. He's got a great career, but he's not emotionally available. Yeah. He's not psychologically safe mm -hmm. or he's not mentally mature. So now as a woman, I have to go back and say, okay, what's more important to me? Do I want a man that's able to pay all these bills? Or do I want a man that knows when to show up in my emotional space or my mm -hmm. psychological need of safety? So would I mean, you mm -hmm. would you would you then say the one so like you just said, he is let's say he's a provider with mm -hmm. financially, but mm -hmm. he's not psychologically safe. Mm-hmm. So those ones that you use, then would you say that the woman who doesn't, oh, who cannot provide for herself financially, would you say that that would be the one that she chooses that because he's financially safe, but yet she lacks? So based on where she is, is based on where she is, and it's, you know, stability wise, is the, is how she chooses based on the man financial. Exactly. Yes, and that's how women ended up being in these relationships because remember. Um, we're on a third wave of feminism, right? And mm -hmm. so the previous waves of feminism was about voting and, you know, and it, we have laws that until 1972, I think it was, that women were still fighting for certain rights in education. 1972. That's ago. not far from when I was born. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we were still fighting for certain rights. And so the women back in those days, that's exactly the reason why they subjected themselves to abuse, rape, cheating husbands, husbands with children around the corner, you know, because they couldn't, they were not allowed to, to go out and get an education or to work to be able to provide. That was a social construct that men in a patriarchal society put in place to be able to control women. Hmm. So we again, we have to be very careful of what we're asking for. So a woman who can provide for herself financially, if she's in that space, that should be as important uh, as that that I want a man who makes equal 
to me. If I make six, if she, let's say I'm a woman, I make six figures. Mm -hmm. And my lifestyle is good enough. Why should I seek a man who makes six figures? But I mean, the, it doesn't really make sense. So, so, I, so mm -hmm. let me just switch it for you a little bit into more of a psychological aspect. So I was taking this course and they have what's called um, be love and de love, right? And so be love is me loving Kirk for exactly who he is. I just love you because you're Kirk. That's it. There's no, it's not because you're retired military. You have all these money and all this, you know, we could travel the world. We could do all these things. It's not for any of that. It's just because yeah. I think you're a cool person, right? Okay. I love what you stand for. I love who you are, you know, to your family, to your children, whatever. Okay. And then you have deficiency love, right? Which is D love mm -hmm. for deficiency. And so I love you because of something you bring to me, mm -hmm. right? I love you because of how you make me feel, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I love you because of the things that you can do for me. And so what we're looking at in a lot of relationships is D love, is deficiency love. So I'm basically loving you more than likely in a space that I'm inadequate, so no that you're feeling that void, right? And so I think that when women have money, it's either two things. They're going along with the societal norm that men are supposed to be providers is mm -hmm. either that or they are afraid because they saw someone or it's happened to them that they were open, you know, with a guy that didn't have as much as them and they got burned. Mm -hmm. And so now it's like I'm not dating any more men that's below me um, economically because this guy just you know, took me for everything that I had. That and so, sense. yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those two things, you know, they saw it happen to a friend or they saw it on social media or it's happened to them. And now they're afraid okay. to death. And they're like, I'm not dealing with any more broke dudes. So let, yeah. let me ask you this. Let me ask you a direct question. Okay. A direct question. Mm -hmm. No, I, I've heard what you just said. So here's the question. Mm -hmm. Are men supposed to be providers? Are men supposed to be the providers? Mm -hmm. I think it's so funny because this is something I was going to do a video on earlier. But <laughs> I think that in the society that we currently live in, with most people not understanding that that, that idea is a social construct, I think that men should be the providers, but not for the woman's sake, for his own sake. Because most men, until they heal and detach themselves from that idea that their manhood is based on their ability to provide, they're going to feel inadequate when they mm, don't. So mean. if they feel inadequate when they don't, that means that they're going to bring that brokenness to this woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Gotcha. So that's how that's what I think about it. Gotcha. That, I mean, mm -hmm. that makes sense because if he believes I should, if I believe I should be this, but I'm not, this, then here I am feeling insecure and and feeling less than. And then when I approach a woman to get in a relationship, here I am feeling uh, confused and coming there right. scared. Yeah. So yeah, I, I right. completely get right. it. Right. Right. So if a it. woman meets the man that has unsubscribed to that then it would be okay for him not to be the provider because he has found his worth in something else. But as long as he's attached to this worldview, mm -hmm. then it's, it's not good. And even for me, for a woman that understands what I understand, you know, from a psychological standpoint, from a societal standpoint, I still have to deal with those men that feel inadequate and they feel those things, even though I'm sitting here saying, you know, your value right. is beyond that. You bring so much more to my life. I don't need the money. You know, I was dating this guy and we were, you know, going through, and I talked to you about this guy like some years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, 
about a year or so ago, he was like, um, you know, I really want to work on my finances. And, you know, because I want to be able to give you the attention that you want. And I'm like, we're really in trouble. If you think that our issue is going to be solved by you <laughs> increasing your. And at this point, I mean, I was good financially. And I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, imme my immediate thought was like, we're in trouble. But as I as time went past and I really thought about the space he was in, I realized just how connected a man um his value and his his financial status, how interconnected those things were. And it's yeah. tragic. It's tragic. Mm -hmm. It is. It's, tragic. it's pretty, you know, that's, I like the way how you put that because when you go towards that, that direction of that, with, with this topic, it makes sense. It mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. And this is why we are so connected. When we're having all these debates about, how much a man makes and why should he make this and what a woman should want this and she's a gold digger for expecting this and all the nonsense, all the nonsense debates and all the little young dudes talking nonsense, the young girls talking nonsense. Both people are just missing the whole point. Right, right. That's exactly what's going on. Yeah, That's exactly what's going on. We're missing the point. We're missing the reason why we're getting into relationships. We're missing the reason why. I mean, you're supposed to be in a relationship for, with a person that makes you a better version of yourself, you know, even when that's, that's difficult, yeah. you know, um, and then you two go out and make the world a better place. Mm. You know, that's, that's what we're, that's what we're supposed to be here for because, you know, anybody that disagrees with that, let's have this conversation again when your daughter grows up and she meets one of these little boys that haven't been properly mentored. You know what I'm saying? Like, I we need to make the world a better place because we have children and grandchildren that we have to leave here. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to be knows. here to be able to guide them and, and protect them, you know? So if we leave this space the way that it is, we're leaving our children and grandchildren a complete mess. And so that's what my motivation is. Mm. Yeah. We de listen, we definitely gotta listen. We gotta, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to bring you on a on a uh, one of my YouTube lives, man, and just talk. Yeah. Just, yeah. just yeah. Yeah. talk. No, no expectations. Just converse. Um, because I have a lot of women, um, on my YouTube, uh, my YouTube group. I have a lot of women on my YouTube. A whole lot. Mm -hmm. Not that much men. I don't. For some reason, men don't follow me. Well, some but do. You're but not bashing women. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably not. Um, but uh, we're gonna have to definitely meet and talk because I think, like, that kind of stuff that you just spoke about is very. I think that's a missing piece. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very missing piece, and I think we need to hear more of that stuff. So I'm gonna probably make about three videos from this. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, good, yeah. good deal, good deal. <laughs> I'm yeah, I mean, three videos from this. I, I have this thing that I say. I think it is reckless and irresponsible. For us as community partners, essentially, is what we are when we're talking out into the public. I think that it's reckless and irresponsible for us to have conversations without why. Why is this like this? You know, and that brings in the the um, social, economics, the psycho psychological aspect. You know, we have to discuss the why. We have to understand why Black men are where they are, or men in general. Why women, you know, I had this guy, I had this conversation today, and he's like, you know, women are, um, I've realized that women over 40, they don't, they don't want a relationship anymore. I said, well, you have to realize that when you guys are, the boys are young, 15 to maybe 35 or 40, you know, it's like, no, don't settle down. Do everything that you think you're big enough and bad enough to do. But we're told don't do that reserve and hold yourself, you know, and look for a husband. And then by the time we've had children with the wrong men or, you know, relationships that didn't work out or whatever, and we're 40, the men want to settle down. And we're like, I mean, for me, I'm 46. My oldest son just turned 30 uh, on the 17th. I got a 30 year old. <laughs> 
Why am I going to sign up to in a relationship to do laundry and be ready for sex and cook meals and all this? Why would I sign up for that? You know, when my children are all gone, where were you guys when I needed to raise my children? You know what? Me and my wife was talking about this. We were talking about this. Um, and, I, and I think this is why it's important to start young, having relationship young and go into our old ages with it. Because at, at a certain age, I think, man, I don't feel like, man, I don't feel like being used. I don't feel like being, I don't feel like bringing this. I don't feel like doing this extra. But if you have somebody all this time, it would be so different. You know it what is. I mean? So I think we, I think we got it wrong. Yes, we do. I, I think this is supposed to start and then that's how you build. Because now, exactly. let's say now, you know what I mean? Now, let's say I make six figures, seven figures, whatever. I got my properties. I got my homes. I got family. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not looking for a woman to build with her. I don't want to build them over with you. You already I'm, I'm already built. So I'm like, so what the hell do you do now? So now it's like, shit, this is the problem. We wait too long. We wait yes. until we are. So maybe... We and men, we on my page, yes, we do have a backwards. And that's why I'm always on the men. And they think that I'm bashing them. And I'm not bashing. I'm trying to show them that you have to detach yourself from this worldview because you're ruining your life. And there's statistical data out here with how many men are growing old and alone in nursing homes because they did not foster relationships. They did, I'm sorry about that. They didn't foster relationships in their younger years. They did, they weren't really there for their children like they should have been. They may have paid, you know, they may have paid child support, but they weren't yeah. like the fathers in the home. And so you get sick. The kids are like, oh, my dad's in the nursing homes. Like, oh, okay. They go on with their lives. Most women are not going to have to worry about that. They're going to the have there. friends there. The children are going to be there. The grandchildren are going to be there. So uh -huh. men think that I'm bashing them and I'm not. I'm trying to prepare them for the reality if they don't change. We have it wrong. We have it backwards. Like you said, men are, are taught from a little boy to bang everything you could bang until you're 40. I, I bang on that too. Right. You know, but then that same society that told you you were Superman and King mm -hmm. Dingling, mm -hmm. that same society, when you turn 40 and you're sleeping on your mama's couch, mm -hmm. that same society is going to say you're a scrub. Mm -hmm. After you 40 years or you divorce, you got the money because all the money is gone. You got like yeah. four kids, so you got child support. You ain't got nothing much. Now you can your go home and settle down with Your license yeah. suspended because you didn't pay your child support. Your mm -hmm. credit's bad. You know, you didn't invest into yourself. You don't have a career. You didn't get an education. You just, you just did women. That was your career, women. I have prime examples in my life. I see it. And men think I'm not bashing. I'm trying to tell you the truth so you can turn this thing around. You know, and I think that the change has to come from the men. I, because men take this leadership role yeah. in society the change has to come from the men because we're in a patriarchal society you know um yeah we definitely have it backwards man we got it backwards. yes we, yeah. we definitely got it and, and, and then you have another component because i've actually asked other men of other cultures there's two things my children grew up in a predominantly white area by the time their white friends were 25, every single one of them was married. Mm -hmm. Every one of them. The black boys that dated the white girls were married, but the black boys that dated the black girls were not married, including my son. 